How are you? What am I doing? I'm making a snowflake. Are you familiar with snowflakes? They're pretty cool, right? Go outside, play in the snow, do all these things. But how do snowflakes form? And does that affect the different types of snow that we get? The ones that make it great for building a snowman and the other ones that are just kind of a little too frozen to even be able to walk on? What do you think? Let's look into it, right? Before we talk about what exactly a snowflake is, first we have to figure out what snow is. And your first answer might be that it's just frozen water. And that's kind of true. But if it's just frozen water, then how is it different from ice? It turns out that snow is a little bit more than frozen water. You see, snow starts out as raindrops, really, really high up in the sky. But raindrops aren't the only thing that's up there. They're all sorts of little particles just kind of floating around. Some of them are little pieces of pollen, the stuff that might make you sneeze in the spring if you have allergies. Might also be little bits of clay and dirt that somehow have just managed to make it up high in the sky. But then it gets cold. And what happens is those water droplets start to freeze and they freeze around these little particles, things like the pollen and the clay, and they start falling down to earth. And that is snow. I know, pretty cool, right? But wait, okay, so that's, that's snow and that's also how an individual snowflake forms. But aren't there different types of snowflakes? Now here's the thing. I always thought every snowflake was unique. Did you think that? I know. Is it true? The truth is, it's both kind of true and kind of not true that each snowflake is unique because it depends on what we're looking at when it comes to snowflakes. You see, snowflakes, they can take on different shapes depending on the environmental conditions that are taking place as they fall to the ground. And by environmental conditions, we're talking about things like wind, right? So a really strong wind could blow towards a snowflake and make it form a certain shape, or it could get really cold really quickly. And that could form another type of snowflake. All of them end up having about six points on them, but they can take different shapes. And if you were to pick up a snowflake and look at it under a microscope, you would see different shapes. We now know that snowflakes really only form about 35 different shapes though. We used to think it was endless, and now we know it's about 35. They can look a little different, but they'll still be one of those shapes. So in that case, each snowflake's not 100% unique. But the thing is, we can go in and look at a snowflake at a really tiny level, so tiny you can't even see it in a microscope. And we look at a snowflake at that level, we call it the molecular level. Then each snowflake is unique. So there aren't really just endless shapes of snowflakes, but each snowflake is unique, kind of like us. You can get different types of snow depending again on the environmental conditions. So you might get soft, powdery snow that's perfect for skiing or sledding. Or you might get granular snow. And this snow is a lot wetter than the powdery snow that's pretty dry. And this snow is perfect for things like building a snowman, which is so much fun. And then there's two other types of snow. And the thing is these snow types, they don't really form based on the environmental conditions that happen as the snowflake is falling. It's more what happens once the snowflakes reach the ground. One type of snow that can form is a crust-like snow. And basically that happens if the sun comes out and the snow on the ground, the very top layer of it starts to melt just a little bit and then it gets really cold and it freezes really quickly. And basically it forms like a layer of ice on top of the snow. And that's a crust-like snow. And the final type of snow is a slushy snow. And it's not as fun as the slushy that you maybe can buy and drink. Instead, it's cold and kind of hard to play with because it forms when the snow starts to melt, but it hasn't quite melted. So it's like kind of wet, like really wet, but also still kind of snowy. 
and then it just gets you really wet and you can't really, you know, form it into snowballs or anything. So that's not a super fun step. But it is pretty cool to know that there are different types of snow and it affects whether we can build a snowman or go skiing. And it's also really cool to know how snowflakes form because I had no idea. I thought they were like ice. What do you think? Pretty cool, right? Do you wanna try making your own snowflake? Check out the link below in the description for step-by-step -step instructions so that you can make your own snowflake. And I'll see you next time.